and welcome to Book Nook. My name is Bethany Kinder and I'm the Communications and Development Director for Read Aloud West Virginia. Read Aloud West Virginia is a nonprofit organization dedicated to motivating children to want to read. Joining me today is special guest Coach Andrew Wright of the UC baseball team. Welcome Coach. Thank you for having me. He's going to be talking to us a little bit today about why reading is important to him and how he has used reading to implement different values into his team. And also he's going to tell us a little bit about how he became a coach, et cetera, et cetera. So coach, tell us a little bit about you, how you became a coach, and why reading is important to you. Sure. Uh, originally from uh, Woodstock, New Brunswick, Canada, small town up on the border of Maine. And uh, my motivations to be a coach really stem from the fact that I played for my father for from the time I was little to... Uh, to growing up and just seeing the impact that he had um, on on people in our community and the community as a whole was really really something I kind of wanted to be a part of so you know that was a, a really big part of it. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit how you became the UC baseball coach. Sure I uh, actually left uh, Concord University which is my alma mater uh, to come be the head coach here in 2015 uh, you know it was an opportunity I think from a professional standpoint to to kind of put my stamp on something and, and bring the values that I feel are successful in a college baseball program uh, to the Charleston community. So you've mentioned to me previously that your children love to read mm -hmm. and so how did that come about and how did you kind of implement those values of reading into their lives? Sure, I, th I think it started, uh, it really started, my mother was, a, was an elementary school teacher for 30 plus years uh, before she retired and just growing up in a household like that where you have you know, you're surrounded by educators, my father being the baseball coach and my mother being the educator, uh, really that was something that we were inspired to do because we understood the value of reading. Uh, so I know uh, how, how impactful it was on myself and my academic pursuits and I want to make sure that I'm passing that down to my two girls. Absolutely. So your girls are avid readers. Yes, they are. What are yeah. some of their favorite books these days? Uh, well, actually, uh, Kennedy, my youngest, uh, she likes um, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, the places you'll go. She's a big fan of that one. Uh, Dr. Sue, she eats it up. So she's. Uh, we've done. Spent a lot of time with that, and it's getting to the point now where, you know, where she's four years old. She's not quite reading the the words, but she's able to retell the stories, uh, retell the stories, and and she's also a big fan of green eggs and ham as well. And uh, my oldest, uh, Alex, who's seven, is onto some chapter books and things like that. So she's really really taking off with the reading, and I think that it plays. The, the reason why I feel uh, is because, you know, we made it such a big, a big deal to read in our household because we think it's important. Absolutely. Well, to draw it back to uh, some more values that you find important, mm -hmm. I see that the UC baseball team is involved in the Charleston community, mm -hmm. and we have been fortunate to partner with the UC baseball team as Read Aloud West Virginia, and we actually were able to go to Cedar Grove Elementary with the UC baseball team and Coach Wright and his other coaches and distribute books to the children there. And so, Coach, tell our viewers a little bit more about what happened that day. Sure. Uh, our program is built on three cornerstones. First one being graduate, obviously that's kind of the point of going to school. Uh, the second being competing for championships, just putting a competitive product on the field. And the third being giving back to the community. Uh, we have had the opportunity, even since we've been in the Charleston community, to give back as a program well over 2,000 hours. Uh, so having the opportunity to, to, to couple with uh, Relau West Virginia was just incredible uh, because I do hold reading and elementary education uh, so dear to my heart, uh, to have the opportunity to get out and do that was just awesome. And I, I loved the way that our players took to it and, and, and really hopefully energized uh, that, that school and that community to, to kind of dive into the books. Absolutely. So to brag on the UC baseball team um, for a minute, I was actually present at Cedar Grove Elementary and the guys were asked to read a snippet from one of the books mm -hmm. that we were distributing to the library and these guys acted out the books and they, there was an impromptu rap mm -hmm. of one of the books and these guys really just interacted with these kids and we're so proud of the baseball team mm -hmm. and I'm a UC alum and so seeing the way that the program has transformed has been really refreshing and encouraging mm -hmm. and um, I'm proud of your team and I'm sure that you are as well. Oh, very much so, very much so. They took it, again, it, it's, it's a piece to the college baseball experience that we feel a lot of programs uh, lack for whatever reason or the other, but uh, in ours we really want to make sure that our people are prepared to, to go out and be successful in whatever role they're, they're going to play after uh, being a college athlete. So it's nice to see our guys uh, not look at it as a burden, but an opportunity to impact the local community. 
Absolutely. Well, speaking of his team, um, Coach Wright brought two of his baseball uh, guys with him today, and they're actually going to be sharing a book with you all. But tell us a little bit about who you brought with you today. Sure. I brought uh, Anthony Zona, uh, who's a senior right-handed pitcher for us, and uh, Jordan Peck, who's a, a freshman right-handed pitcher for us as well. Both of them are, are standouts in the classroom, uh, and I felt they really represented our program well. Uh, so I'm happy they had the opportunity to come today. Well, we are excited to have you here and have uh, them with us as well. And so before we begin the reading portion, tell me a little bit about the book that you're going to read to us today. Sure. Uh, first book that I'm going to read um, is actually a book called Davy Bighead, who, which was written by uh, a college teammate of mine at Concord. Uh, it was then Concord College, now Con Concord University. So Pete Hayden, uh, when he was done, penned a, uh, authored a, a children's book and uh, actually in 2009 won an award. And, I'm happy to be able to promote it. And then the second book that I'm going to be reading is uh, The Little Engine That Could. So the thing that I like about reading, and I think where my, my mother uh, laid a really good foundation for our family, is that the, the books that we were exposed to really shaped how we think and view the world. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, as silly as it sounds, uh, The Little Engine That Could is, if you spend any time with me, you know I'm going to try to figure things out. And, and a lot of that comes from just comes from what I was exposed to when I was younger. So it's a book that we try to, to pass down to the girls and things like that. So really excited to get to share it. Absolutely. Well, we are so excited to hear from C Coach Wright and the two baseball players that he brought with him today. So we will go right into that portion of the segment. Davy Bighead, Dream Big by Peter J. Hayden. Today was the first day of school and Davy did not want to get out of bed. Davy finally got up, but he was running late and could not get his shirt over his head. As Davy tried to get on the bus, the kids began to laugh. His head was simply too big, and he was stuck. When Davy sat down in class, no one behind him could see the teacher. The kids started to tease Davy, calling him Davy Bighead. Even at recess, Davy could not catch a break. All he wanted to do was climb on the jungle gym. Sure enough, he got stuck. In gym class, they played dodgeball and poor Davy was always the first one out. No matter how fast Davy moved, he was not able to keep the ball from hitting his head. After school, the kids wanted to play hide-and-go-seek. Davy thought it would be a great way to make friends. Instead, all he heard was, I see you, Davy Big Head. I see you. Davy could not sleep that night. He was thinking about his day at school. As he sat awake, he got a very good idea. Can you think of what it might have been? Davy skipped the bus that day. He could not wait to get to school, so he hopped on his bike, and off he went. His idea was to play soccer. Davy asked the coach if he could play, and the coach said yes. A uniform was waiting for Davy in the locker room. As the game began, kick after kick bounced off Davy's head. No matter how hard the other team tried, Davy blocked them all. With every block, the kids cheered. Davy, Davy, Davy. The game was almost over, and Davy's team led by one goal. He had to stop one more kick. The kick was on its way, and Davy was ready. The crowd held its breath, waiting to see what would happen. Davy dove for the corner of the goal to make the block, and he did it. Davy did it. He blocked that kick as everyone began to cheer. Davy led his team to victory and could not wait to go back to school and do it all again tomorrow with his new friends. Next book I'm going to read is The Little Engine That Could by Waddy Piper. Chug, 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 puff, puff, puff. Ding dong, ding dong. The little train rumbled over the tracks. She was a happy little train. For she had such a jolly load to carry. Her cars were filled full of good, good things for boys and girls. There were toy animals, giraffes with long necks, teddy bears with almost no necks at all, and even a baby elephant. Then there were dolls, dolls with blue eyes and yellow curls, Dolls with brown eyes and brown bobbed heads and the funniest little toy clown you ever saw. And there were cars full of toy engines, airplanes, tops, jackknives, picture puzzles, books, and every kind of thing boys or girls could want. But that was not all. Some of the cars were filled with all sorts of good things for boys and girls to eat. Big golden oranges, red-cheeked apples, bottles of creamy milk for their breakfast, fresh spinach for their dinners, peppermint drops, and lollipops for after-meal treats. 
the little train was carrying all these wonderful things to the good little girls and boys on the other side of the mountain. She puffed along merrily. Then all of a sudden she stopped with a jerk. She simply could not go another inch. She tried and she tried, but her wheels would not turn. What were all those good little boys and girls doing on the other side of the mountain without the wonderful toys to play with and the good food to eat? Here comes a shiny new engine, said the funny little clown who jumped out of the train. Let us ask him to help us. So all the toys and, tall, toys and dolls cried out together. Please, shiny new engine, won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine is broken down, and the boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. But the shiny new engine snorted. I pull you? I'm a passenger engine. I have carried a fine big train over the mountain with more cars than you ever dreamed of. My train had sleeping cars with comfortable berths, a dining car where waiters bring whatever hungry people want to eat, and parlor cars in which people sit in soft arm chairs and look out of big plate glass windows. I pull the likes of you? Indeed not. And off he steamed to the roundhouse where engines live when, the, when they are not busy. How sad the little train and all the, doys, the dolls and toys felt. Then the little clown called out, the pasture engine is not the only one in the world. Here's another engine coming, a great big strong one. Let us ask, ask him for help. The little toy clown waved his flag and a big strong engine came to a stop. Please, oh please, big engine, cried all the dolls and toys together. Won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine has broken down, and the good little boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. But the big strong engine bellowed, I'm a freight engine. I've just pulled a big train loaded with big machines over the mountain. These machines print books and newspapers for grown-ups to read. I'm a very important engine indeed. I won't pull the likes of you. And the freight engine pulled off. In, indignantly to the roadhouse. The little train and all the dolls and toys were very sad. Cheer up, cried the little toy clown. The freight engine is not the only one in the world. Here comes another. He looks very old and tired, but our train is so little, perhaps he can help us. So the little toy clown waved his flag, and the dingy, rusty old engine stopped. Please, kind engine, cried all the dolls and toys together. Won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine is broken down, and the boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. But the run, run, rusty old engine sighed. I'm so tired. I must rest my weary wheels. I cannot pull even so little a train as yours over the mountain. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. And off he rumbled to the roundhouse, chugging, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. Then indeed the little train was very, very sad, and the dolls and toys were ready to cry. But the little clown called out, Here's another engine coming, a little blue engine, a very little one. Maybe she will help us. The very little engine came, chug, chugging merrily along. When she saw the toy clown's flag, she stopped quickly. What's the matter, my friends? She asked kindly. Oh, little blue engine, cried the dolls and toys. Will you pull us over the mountain? Our engine is broken down, and the good boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. Please, please help us, little blue engine. I'm not very big, said little blue engine. They use me for only for switching trains in the yard. I've never been over the mountain. But we must get over the mountain before the children awake, said all the dolls and toys. The very little engine looked up and saw, the, saw tears in the doll's eyes. And she thought of the good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain who would not have any toys or good food unless she helped. Then she said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And she hitched herself to the little train. She tugged and pulled and pulled and tugged and slowly, slowly they started off. The toy clown jumped aboard and all the dolls and toys and animals began to smile and cheer. Puff, puff, chug, chug went the little blue engine. I think I can, 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 I think I can. Up, 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 faster and faster and faster, the little engine climbed until at least that, until at last they reached the top of the mountain. Down in the valley lay the city. Hooray, hooray, cried the funny little clown and all the dolls and toys. The good little boys and girls in the city will be happy because you helped us kind little blue engine. And the little blue engine smiled and seemed to say, 
as she puffed steadily away down the mountain. I thought I could. 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 The end. Next, right-handed pitcher Jordan Peck is going to read, Oh, the places you'll go. Hi, I'm Jordan Peck, and today I'll be reading Oh, the Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off in a way. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know. And you are the guy who will, you'll, who will decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you'll say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not so good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along. You'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang ups and hang ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickly perch and your gang will fly on. You'll be left in a lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump and the chances are then that you'll be in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun and slumping yourself is not easily done. You will come to a place where the streets are not marked some windows are lighted, but mostly they're darked. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Or right in three quarters? Or maybe not quite? Or go around back and sneak in from behind? Simple it's not, I'm afraid you will find, for a mind maker upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start into race down long wiggled roads at a breaknecking pace and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space headed, I fear, toward a most useless place, the waiting place. For people just waiting, waiting for a train to go or a bus to come or a plane to go or the mail to come or the rain to go or the phone to ring or the snow to snow or waiting around for a yes or no, or waiting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting, waiting for the fish to bite, or waiting for wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for Friday night, or waiting perhaps for their Uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a better break, or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig with curls, or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. With banner flip flapping, once more you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky, ready because you're that kind of a guy. Oh, the places you'll go. There is fun to be done. There are points to be scored. There are games to be won. And the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame. You'll be famous as famous can be with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except when they don't because sometimes they won't. 
I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win because you'll play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not, alone will be something. You'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go, though the weather be foul. On you will go, though your enemies prowl. On you will go, though the hacken cracks howl. Onward up many a frightening creek. Though your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far, and face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds, strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact, and remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. So, be your name Bucksbaum or Bixby or Bray, or Mordecai Ali Van Allen O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. The end. Next, Anthony Zono will be reading The Giving Tree. Hi, my name is Anthony Zona, and today I'll be reading The Giving Tree. Once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy. And every day the boy would come. And he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk and swing from her branches and eat her apples. And they would go play hide and seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much, and the tree was happy. But time went by, and the boy grew older, and the tree was often alone. Then one day, the boy came to the tree, and the tree said, Come, boy. Come and climb my trunk and swing from my branches and eat my apples and play in my shade and be happy. I am too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I only have leaves and apples. Take my apples and sell them into the city. Then you will have money and you will be happy. And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away, and the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time, and the tree was sad. And then one day, the boy came back, and the tree shook with joy. And she said, Come, boy, climb my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I am too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want, to keep, I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife, and I want children, so I need a house. Can you give me a house? The tree said, I have no house. The forest is my house, but you may cut off my branches and build a house. Then you will be happy. And so the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build his house. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time. And when he came back, the tree was so happy, she could hardly speak. Come, boy, she whispered. Come and play. I am too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? 
Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. Then you can sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. And after a long time, the boy came back again. I am sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing on them. I am too old to swing on the branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I am too tired to climb, said the boy. I am sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I am just an old stump. I am sorry. I don't, meet, I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightened herself up as much as she could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down, sit and rest. And the boy did. And the tree was happy. The end. You can check these books out at your local library. And the West Virginia Read Aloud, thank you a lot for having us here and giving the opportunity to read these books. Thank you.